Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to go over the concept of being able to create your own LinkedIn profile. It's just such an amazing opportunity uh, to be able to do and connect with different people. Uh, before I get started, I just want for the people who may not be as familiar with LinkedIn, that it's a online networking tool, um, job search tool, um, as well as a place for you to share your efforts and work, um, both as posts and on what is almost a digital CV. Uh, there is many other things LinkedIn can do as well. They have their own training programs and courses and so many other things, but I'm just gonna go through some of the key strategies uh, to use on LinkedIn that will make you extremely effective um, on the site uh, and be able to uh, connect and network and build what you're looking for on this platform. So the first uh, important piece is uh, going onto your profile section. There's a cover page background. Uh, so generally trying to give a taste of what you stand for or what you're about uh, is a great thing to do to give texture to your profile. Um, you also want to have a professional photo. So a photo of you in a professional like setting um, is also preferential. Uh, and, you know, going through it, uh, you also want to consider the factors of your about page. A lot of link people on LinkedIn I see are doing like three, four, five sentences on their about page. And even then they're putting links to other things. Um, I find that to be a lot. And um, generally, I, I'd recommend just to do one paragraph. Uh, the idea is you want to be able to give someone an appetizer, like a small taste of what you are about, um, because you have a bit of a small plate to be able to display it to them online. It's not really the function of a CV in that regard, where you can just delve into every you know facet and point. Um, I think it's much better that you have a concise paragraph that someone will fully read that tells you or tells them what you're about than having multiple paragraphs that someone may not be able to get through. Uh, so I'd recommend keeping the about page pretty concise. The featured section is something I just don't see a lot of people doing. And it's just unfortunate because there's so many things uh, that people may have done or have accomplished and it should be displayed and people should be able to see and share and gain experiences from that. So in my example, um, and I'm gonna contextualize it as well on things you can do. Uh, so I've featured, I got a scholarship from Klaus Nobel who is a, a member of the Nobel uh, Prize family. Um, so this was a scholarship for sustainability and for uh, you know, general things for the planet. Uh, so you, I took the PD, PNG image um, and then when I got on featured, I added a post and then you can actually link uh, image onto your post, um, which is very useful. Uh, on uh, This is with McKinsey and Company. I got an award for social entrepreneurship, so similarly image. Uh, this one was on the United Nations website. Uh, so I took a full screenshot uh, to be able to display uh, my recognition there. But you also can do videos. So here was uh, when I was featured on NBC News. So I took the NBC News uh, clip and you can either uh, link the URL, or you can, um, you should be able to link the full, uh, yeah, uh, video, um, check that, but you should be able to link the, the video. If you can't, um, always, uh, make like a public, uh, Google drive, uh, and you can, um, upload a, the video on Google drive and then create a link on Google drive that's publicly available. And then you can just use that link um, to feature your video in the featured section. So it's just another way you can get around that or, or do it on YouTube if you'd like. It's preferential to you on how you want to do this, such a thing. Um, in terms of the activity section on your LinkedIn page, this one is uh, really interesting because it's uh, it covers all the posts that you make. So you make posts that can be publicly viewed by everyone. You would also make posts just to your network. Uh, so, uh, and you can see the reviews from it. So, uh, this is one here. I'm going to be speaking in September at the University of Cambridge. So what I did and what you should do is if you ever have opportunity, um, you can use the acquiescent a, a sign and then link the institution or business or organization that is associated with, and then leverage hashtags, um, that basically for individuals that are searching for those hashtags will make your post even more public. Um, in terms of likes, 
Uh, there's a few things you should know. Um, there's the celebratory symbol in addition to the right, the normal like button. There's a support system. This one um, is more oftenly used um, when there's someone who's, uh, if you're promoting a cause, but you also see people who sometimes just are interested in your post. The love symbol, insightful, you usually see when something is like thought provoking content and funny for something that's very humorous. Uh, I'll go back into the posting a bit later, um, but just generally, that's the general idea of kind of what, um, how that op operates and works and that gets shared across the different people. Um, so uh, under the experience section, this is where you can put any work experience, um, any experience you might've had volunteering, even if you went on a gap year or if you've done something uh, beyond the confines of what is considered traditional work. Uh, it's still great to put that on here. If you did freelancing, maybe you can link the freelancing site and put yourself as a freelancer. So there's a lot, of, it's, it's broadly in terms of spectrum, but you should be able to list those experiences. You just use the plus sign here and you upload your experience. Um, in addition to your words, you can also um, put more links, which is what I recommend. So oftentimes if I, if someone is a job searcher, it's great not just to see what uh, you've done, but also see examples of your work. So here, this is the NBC feature again, and this was the link to the UN uh, social enterprise group that I helped form with the Global Challenges Foundation partnership with the UN. So you can, these things will, when you click on them, it'll take you to those sites. And that's what you'd like to do as well when you create a position. And you can do add a position here, or if you're taking a career break, you can add that as well. Um, so it's pretty flexible. Um, one thing I recommend a lot of people get these and it's just, I don't never see them on LinkedIn. So if you ever get a certification, like if you get an employee of the month or, you know, any of the certifications from work, uh, keep them, uh, print them, uh, scan them. I mean, and uh, put them on uh, your LinkedIn as experience. Um, it's a great way to give people a bit of texture, a breath of air of some of the things you've been rewarded and recognized for, and that not only you did the job, but that you're recognized for it. So I, I highly recommend um, leveraging that as well. Um, and yeah, so as I said, anything you volunteered for or other factors could be listed as work. You can list your educational experience as well. Um, and if you were uh, honors or what clubs you were part of, et cetera. Uh, under the skills section, you can list skills. So you just click the plus sign. It's pretty intuitive in that regard. You can type a skill or you can use one that's recommended for you. Um, and people who go on your profile can endorse you for those skills. Um, now your profile is public for the most part, but you have some control. So you can make your, your profile more and more private. So you can make your profile image private or do other things to make it more private. But generally, um, default on like a default level, it is a publicly available profile. It's like an online uh, social media account, but you know for professional purposes. Uh, in terms of recommendations, uh, so you can actually message individuals uh, to that are within your connections to recommend you and <laughs> write a testimonial of uh, the efforts you've taken on. Uh, I would recommend giving a broad color palette of people rather than just one medium. So uh, you might want someone who's a mentor, someone you reported to, and someone who's reported to you is a good example, um, or maybe a colleague that's supported you along the way. So in this case, this individual had supported me uh, as I just started working on my proposal um, for social entrepreneurship to the UN. So he's kind of a mentor person. This individual is someone I met um, when I, uh, you know, through, through engaging with the uh, social enterprise work at the UN. Uh, this young woman is, was 12 years old when uh, she had written this recommendation. And she was, uh, at 12 years old, she created a coding system for girls to empower them to code. It's recognized by Google, Michelle Obama, the time, Times Kid of the Year. She's so many accolades, but uh, uh, doing amazing work um, as well. Um, so you can find people from a variety of walks of life is really should be your goal as you go on LinkedIn, um, as well as finding someone who has known you for a while along the way, um, and might be able to testify to your efforts. Uh, and this person was with me, uh, was my, uh, coach when I was in Senegal and I was spending some time overseas after high school. Um, so again, just different walks of life rather than just some, like having a bunch of people who you reported to, 
um, right recommendations, I would rec I would suggest would give you give a, a a broad color palette to people that might be looking to recruit or s provide you with opportunities. They can see you um, being recommended from multiple settings. Um, so I think that's very very helpful. Uh, now, in terms of a few other functions, um, I'm just going to go over everything uh, in terms of that. So it's, it's, it's a bit more broad, but, uh, uh, regular LinkedIn, you will, uh, not, you will get certain things, but as if you update, you'll get access to other things, especially on the analytics side. So you'll be able to see who viewed your profile. You'll be able to, um, even though you'll see who likes your posts, um, you'll get, uh, or comments on it. You'll see more like analytical, uh, data behind how your post performed, um, what companies were looking at your posts, um, and you'll be able to see more stuff about your search appearances, uh, just, just as a, a few things um, that you'll get access to. Um, so with that, that is kind of the overarching profile. If you go on the search section, uh, you can search up for individuals you might want to connect with. There's a difference between connecting and following. Uh, I'll give you examples. So if we go on to uh, Shaquille O'Neal's profile, um, Shaquille O'Neal had actually reached out and offered uh, his team had offered me some entrepreneurial uh, resources a few years ago. Uh, so if you go and click on his profile, you will see that because he's a public figure, you can't necessarily connect with him in the same with with on the connection side. Um, you can follow him. So when you follow him, you can follow his content and posts, but you cannot directly connect with him per se, as in he will also see your posts. Um, however, if you reach out to somebody else, um, you, you go into my network, for example, uh, you can actually connect with different people um, just by you know searching up their name. You can also search up an industry so um, or subject. So if I search up social uh, enterprise, you will um, see individuals that are social entrepreneurs. Um, and there's uh, different categories. So one, two, and three. So um, someone in your first means that you're only one person away from that person. So one person in your network is connected to that person. And sometimes you can actually see who's a mutual connection. So here you can actually see I, wh where the mutual connection was. Uh, and then second is like another step away. And third is like you're three steps away from somebody. Um, so that's a it's a good way to be able to assess how far someone is. And oftentimes um, when you want to connect with someone, uh, what could be served really well is um, if instead of just connecting, you can actually um, you can actually send them a message while you connect, you know, so you can message them. And by messaging them, I'm um, saying, you know, hi, I like your profile and I'm, I'm very interested in this subject or that subject. Um, would you like to connect? It makes it more likely that they will connect with you. Um, so this is a great area. If you um, are interested in like a subject matter for research, you can connect with top thinkers in this area. Uh, if you want to connect with more people in a field you're trying to enter into, uh, this is a great way to be able to connect. And then on the messaging platform, you can try to set up a Zoom meeting with them and learn more insights. So this is just where you're able to really expand your network on a digital platform. It's just a great opportunity to be able to meet different people. I, I've been able to meet uh, a lot of people on LinkedIn. Um, the key, though, is to um, to add value when when you're messaging and, and, and offer um, to offer insights and value to people. Um, your posts can do that as well. So you don't just have to post. Um, you can post accomplishments, but you can also post things that add, add value. So example, I just posted the recent video uh, that I had done on Upwork and how to be able to use uh, the platform to do freelancing online. If you're in between a job or if you're looking for a secondary source of income, I created a full video about how to do that for free. Uh, and you uh, that's something that I think can add value to people on a network where people are generally engaged with work. Now, a third, another component um, that LinkedIn offers uh, is the jobs function. So if you click on jobs, uh, you can actually, you'll find top picks suggested for you. Um, however, you can also um, uh, search uh, what you might be looking for. So if you're looking for consulting, uh, you want to be an advisor, you know, whatever it may be, you can type that skill here. You also can type the country, city, state. Um, so you can actually um, 
geolocate um, what you're and, and approximate what you're what you're trying to uh, search for. Um, or if you have a uh, you're looking to try to hire someone for something, you can also post a job here um, as well. Um, so there's there's a lot you can do with that. Um, my messaging app, I won't go on per se, just because I want to be respectful of a lot of the people who message me. Um, but it's it's simply like a, it just is just an app that has um, all the people you reach out to. And it's just almost like a like a, a texting app inside of LinkedIn, so to speak. Uh, but it's a great resource to be able to connect and talk to your first connections. Your first connections are the ones that are connected with you, and your second ones are the ones that are two steps away from you. So you can mainly connect with your first connections. However, uh, you can actually reach out to people who are not in your network yet and speak to them as well. Um, this uh, capability becomes even more expanded if you um, up, uh, in update and get like a premium or a higher level LinkedIn account. There's more you can do with that. Uh, but it's just, again, it's a really amazing tool um, and you can use it to message almost anyone and reach out to. I, I recently, a few days ago, Forbes 30 Under 30 has reached out to me about an opportunity. Um, and there's, you know, you can get, um, my, my point is you can, you can receive and get a lot of opportunities uh, through LinkedIn um, by creating a, a well kept profile and it doesn't matter what stage you're you're at um if you want to create it if you're still in school uh, i had started my linkedin my junior year of high school um so i've just had a lot of time to build up a lot of different things on it and learn how the systems work and linkedin has changed to be fair a lot since um then um but uh yeah it's it's an amazing opportunity and i highly recommend it um, the only other component um, I'll mention is that there's also LinkedIn learning. So if you're trying to uh, gain skills or upskill yourself, there's um, some incredible um, ways to be able to do that um, on, on this platform. Uh, this view that I'm sending to you is the computer view. There's also the app, um, which most people will be using. Um, it has all the same um, things I showed you, but just um, it's formatted like an uh, as a as an app and an application. Um, what's nice with that as well is you can um, set your notifications um, for the app on. So when you see people are liking your posts or if they're um, reaching out to to speak to you, you'll be updated on your phone regularly about what those activities are. Uh, so with that, I will conclude um, this session on how to be able to use LinkedIn, what LinkedIn is good for. Uh, and the only last thing I will mention is I'd also recommend not just following individuals, uh, I'd recommend uh, following companies, which you can do on the bottom. So you can follow actual companies. There's some companies that will promote job opportunities, internship opportunities, um, speaking engagement opportunities that they may not actually promote elsewhere or even on their site. Um, so it's just a great um, thing to be able to do. And you can see um, the people that are working within those companies um, and connect with them. So if you have a company that you would like to work with, consult for, or whatever it may be, um, speak, speak at, uh, you can connect with those individuals that work there and, and build a relationship and establish rapport. Again, uh, I would recommend not just jumping to the gun um, and, you know, asking that you might want to speak or want a job, but actually try to build a relationship with those individuals um, and establish a rapport um, before jumping in. It, it is worth the time and, and is rewarding. But uh, again, this is a great equalizing platform um, and it has so much opportunity on it. I hope that you are able to take advantage of it more and that this has been helpful for you. Uh, and I'm grateful for you taking the time uh, to listen to what I have to share today. Uh, thank you again.